What's up guys? Today I'm going to cover respiratory and metabolic acidosis and alkalosis with respiratory and renal compensation. Uh, those words are definitely a mouthful and if you look at that girl at the bottom corner that's how I felt the first time I learned this subject. And if you look at the guy all bent over at the other corner that's how I felt afterwards. Now I hope you guys aren't going to feel like that and this is why I'm trying to break this down for you. But there's also more of a purpose to those pictures than me just trying to be funny. So let's get started. So let's start with the pH scale. The pH scale starts at 0 and it runs all the way up to 14. And then what's the neutral value? It's going to be dead center. That's 7. And then where's blood? Blood's pH. Is it this side, the left? Is it to the right? Blood's pH is a little bit to the right. It's right here and that's about 7.4 okay so this part here from 0 to under 7 is that acidic or basic that is acidic so that means that from 7 to 14 is basic so that means blood is slightly what blood is slightly Oh, can't spell. Slightly basic. But there's another word for basic as well, too, and that is alkalinic. If you're wondering where alkalinic comes from, well, when we have a base, a base is usually a hydroxide ion has a charge of minus one. It's going to combine with something that has a charge of plus one. And what are the name of uh, these elements right here in this column? These are the alkali metals. All right, so if an alkali metal such as Na all right, has a plus charge in a combined, then we have sodium hydroxide, same with lithium, potassium, etc. Okay, so blood is slightly basic or slightly alkalinic. So I'm not uh, trying to do a big chemistry lesson here. I'm just trying to cover a few basic concepts that we'll need. So we have hydrogen chloride right here. When it's in solution, it's going to break up and it's going to give off a hydrogen ion and a chloride ion. That's going this way to the right. Now this compound over here, if you remember what it's called, it's called carbonic acid. When that dissociates, it's only going to dissociate one of its protons, not both of them, because you saw it has two, but only one comes off. And then what's this one over here? that is bicarbonate and then we have this phosphate over here it's going to break up dissociate give off one of the hydrogens not both of the hydrogens and then we have ammonium that's also going to give off one of its hydrogens but what's different about these bottom three versus the top one the top one is a strong acid it completely dissociates the bottom three are not strong acids but they are weak acid so these reactions are reversible they can go both ways so what's the importance of having the weak acid versus the strong acid is these weak acids and weak bases together make very good buffers which are going to be very important in our body. When we start talking about the kidneys versus the lungs, the kidneys when they do their compensation these two are going to be very important in there. So these bottom two are very important in renal and out of those two it's the ammonia ammonium combination that are going to be the most important in the kidneys now one last thing before we continue on from here just so we have these terms down acidosis and alkalosis acidosis we're going to be uh, less than seven ph that means we're going to have a low ph and in terms of hydroxide ion concentration, we're going to have a high hydroxide ion concentration. For alkalosis, which is the same thing as saying basic, it's going to be a value greater than 7, which means it's going to be a high pH, which means the hydroxide ion concentration is going to be low. Another quick point to mention is that in blood, you can have hemoglobin bound to a hydrogen and this is also a reversible reaction 
and hemoglobin can release a hydrogen and it can go back as well. Alright, so let's continue. We'll go down here. Okay, quite a few things on this page, but the first thing to look at is this equation up here. This is a very important equation. You want to be able to know how to write this, and I'll give you a way here in a moment. But let's just go over the components first. So first you have carbon dioxide, then I'm sure you know, your h 2 isle your H2O, your water. Then you have H2CO3, but what is that? That is carbonic acid or carbonate. Just take the ic acid off the end and just put A-T-E, carbonate. And then you have your hydrogen ion, and then you have over here bicarbonate. If you notice, look at the arrows, they're reversible and go both ways as well over here. This is a very important enzyme up here. It's usually abbreviated just by its first two letters, C and A, carbonic anhydrase, and it catalyzes this reaction in both directions. Where do you find carbonic anhydrase? Uh, some place is over in the alveoli of the lungs. This is where the air would be. This is your pneumocyte type 2 cell. It secretes surfactant. Surfactant's important. If a baby's born prematurely, by a month or two months, it won't produce it, and it's going to have a tough time breathing. And along with surfactant inside here, you're going to have carbonic anhydrase, specifically CA2. There's about 10, 13 different isoforms, but CA2 comes from the type 2 alveolar cell. You also have type 1 cells, you have macrophages, etc. Anyways, also in your kidneys, in your nephrons, in the tubules, in those cells, you also have carbonic anhydrase located inside of those cells. Alright, so how do I remember how to write this equation? Well, I think about what do I breathe out? Okay, oxygen I breathe in, so carbon dioxide I breathe out. But I must breathe out something more than CO2. And you probably don't notice it if you live in a warm place like me right now in the Caribbean where I'm going to school but when I used to live in upstate New York and if you're on that latitude or up there up north more in Canada what else do you notice on a cold day? Well if you look at that guy down here you're gonna breathe out some vapor so you breathe out water. So I start with what I breathe out. I breathe out CO2 and water. It's a reversible reaction and all I do is I just combine all of these starting with hydrogen there are two hydrogens. How many carbons? There's one carbon. How many oxygen? There's three oxygens. And then this will dissociate. And just pull one hydrogen off of it. So H plus HCO3 minus. Just practice doing that a few times and you'll get it. Again, remember, start with what you breathe out, combine them all, and then just pull one hydrogen off of there. The next point to mention is going to become important later on and that's what I'm going to call a respiratory side and a renal side. Again, they're all involved in both areas but this is just the way I'm trying to do it here is I start here for respiratory so I call this resp start. It will make more sense later on. And then when you get to renal, I call this the start site for renal. So I say renal start. Again, this hopefully will make more sense later on. Now let's talk about an important concept by some dude named Le Chatelier. That's this guy over here. So this principle is pretty important. Okay, so I'm going to try to illustrate it this way. Let's say we draw about four red balls here and then we're going to get the blue and we'll draw four blue balls here and they are linked and joined together. So Le Chatelier's principle says when you have a lot of one substance on one side it's going to cause a reaction to go in the opposite direction. So what eventually is going to happen is that you're going to have some of them still linked to each other 
as you can see over here. And then since the reaction proceeded to the right a little bit, you're going to have some of these on their lonesome by themselves, not joined anymore. So this is what I think about. I picture I have a bunch of Legos over here. And I have a red Lego, I have a blue Lego. I join them together, it's like making a castle. So it's got like I have four castles. But I don't have any more pieces that I can build with. So what I do is I gotta break some of them down so I have an even amount of castles to pieces of Legos. So over here, you know, it's kind of broken up here. I still got the four here, I still got the four here, except some are broken up and some are linked together. Now, I know this is not the best analogy, but let's say, you know, all the pieces were broken off by themselves here. There are the four blue ones, and then we'll make the four red ones. But now, you know, we don't have any more castles. We broke apart all the pieces, so which way is the reaction going to go? Well, we can't go to the right because there's really nothing to break down. So the reaction is going to proceed to the left until it reaches a balance here. So this is kind of like a homeostasis, like a, a balance or what we could say a buffer system right here. So what I'm trying to tell you is if, let's say, we increase uh, one of these over here, like CO2 over here, it's going to cause the reaction to go which way? It's going to go to the left or to the right? Well, if we increase like over here, we're going to go the opposite way. So we go over to the right so that we can work to increase uh, these components as well. Another way to think about it is just picture you have a hill. You're going to go from the high point to the low point. So you'll be going the other way. So hopefully everything is going well so far and you guys aren't pulling your hair out or bent over that toilet yet. But let's continue on, get a little deeper into this material. Now you're going to see a bunch of diagrams here and there's a purpose to all of them. You can see I have that girl pulling her hair out and you'll find why in a moment. But smoking, I'm not going to lecture you on it. You guys know all the goods and the bads and all that. Anyway, smoking can cause emphysema. And emphysema is going to trap the CO2 in your lungs. So if that's your windpipe and you go down here, and let's say that's a lung, and down here that's a lung, or an alveoli, doesn't matter, just air. Uh, emphysema is going to make it hard for the CO2 to escape. So you're going to have a lot of CO2 in here. It's going to be hard to get out because the walls weaken and they start to collapse, especially on expiration. So you're going to have a buildup of CO2. So if you have a lot of CO2 here, and remember Le Chatelier's principle, which way is this reaction going to go? Is it going to go to the right or is it going to go to the left? Well, what I want you to focus on here is the CO2 and the hydrogen ion, the proton. Right? So there's a lot of CO2. Remember, if we go back to that Lego example, if we have a lot on one side, a high, we go down the other side. So it's going to eventually cause an increase in the hydrogen ion concentration. So due to a respiratory problem, something that's going on in the lungs, we are getting acidosis. Why is this acidosis? Well, we have a high hydrogen ion concentration, which means we have a what type of pH? We have a low pH. We'll discuss the compensation mechanism shortly. Let's go to the next scenario, respiratory alkalosis. Well, in acidosis, the CO2 is high, so in alkalosis, the CO2 is going to be low. Well, how do we get low CO2, and how about where am I talking about this concentration of CO2? Well, go back up here. CO2, we're talking about in the lungs. Right? So when we measure, we're measuring in the lungs. And specifically, we're talking about the blood that's traveling through the lungs. It's very hard to remove it from our body, so it's stuck in there. So it gets converted and becomes acid. Down here, well, okay, it seems like the CO2, and excuse my horrible drawing, but it seems that the CO2 is actually getting out. So we're going to have a low concentration of CO2. 
How do we get CO2 to come out? Do we breathe more or less? Well, hold your breath. What happens when you hold your breath? All right, don't hold it too long, but you're keeping that CO2 trapped inside of there. So it's becoming an acidoic condition. But if you breathe out more, so this would be hyperventilate versus up here would be hypoventilate. You're getting rid of that CO2. So here you are, you're trying to study this, you're freaking out, so you're breathing a lot. So the CO2 concentration in your blood, in your lungs, in your body starts to decrease. Now if it's going to decrease over here, again, we always want to look over here at the hydrogen ion. What, what's going to happen over here? Well, if this is decreasing, that means which way is the reaction goes? And go to the right or to the left? Well, up here, the reaction went this way to the right. Over here, it's decreasing. So we're having less and less of it. If we have less and less of it, we need to, you know, kind of bring it back to a balance. We need to bring it up. So we're going to go the opposite direction. We're going to go to the left. So if we're going to the left, we're using everything that's over here. So this amount is going to go down. So it's going to start to decrease. And if we decrease the hydrogen ion concentration, then what's going to happen to the pH? pH is going to go up. What's pH going up? Is that acidosis or alkalosis? Well, there it is. It's alkalosis. So again, we get rid of the CO2. We need to replace it. So to replace it, we have to go that way and start making it. So that means we're using everything over here. So that's going to decrease the hydrogen ion. So the pH is going to go up. And over here, there's a lot of CO2, so we need to break it down. So if we're going to break it down, we're going to go to the right, which means we're increasing the hydrogen ion concentration. If we're increasing hydrogen ion concentration, then we're going to decrease pH and creating an acidic environment. So do you remember how I told you for respiratory, we're going to start on this side, and you saw how we did that over here? Respiratory, we started over here on that side. Well, now we're going to start on this side over here for metabolic conditions. So metabolic acidosis. This should be pretty easy to start off right away. Well, what's in acidic condition? It is a low pH, which means what's happening to the hydrogen ion concentration? It's going up. So we can have it happen from an increase in hydrogen ion concentration. If we have an increase in hydrogen ion concentration, which way is this reaction gonna go? Well, we have a high amount here. We have a lot of things we need to get rid of it. So it's going to go to the left. And hence, what's going to happen to CO2? The CO2 concentration is going to increase. This increased CO2 is going to stimulate our chemoreceptors and our carotid bodies and our aortic arch to stimulate the respiratory center so we breathe out more. So you'll find patients with metabolic acidosis, such as diabetic patients, who have diabetes mellitus because of ketoacidosis, the ketone bodies will be increasing. They'll tend to be hyperventilating a little bit depending on the severity of their condition. Now, this little funny comic strip, why did I put it there? Well, when you got the runs, there's a lot of bicarbonate in the feces. And this is another way to get metabolic acidosis. And here's bicarbonate, so if you're, you know, letting go of all that bicarbonate down the drain, you are going to be decreasing it. By decreasing the amount of carbonate, you're messing up this ratio. So if you have a ratio here of HCO3 bicarbonate to hydrogen ion, you're decreasing this. So hence, if this is decreasing, then this is gonna be increasing. So either way, you are increasing the hydrogen ion concentration. All right, what about this guy hunched over down here? Well, alkalosis, alkalosis, what's the pH, high or low? It's going to be a high pH. So if it's a high pH, then what's happening to the hydrogen ion concentration? It's going to be low. So we have a low concentration of hydrogen ions. So again, this is getting into compensation a little bit, but which way is the reaction going to go? Well, we have low here. We need to supply it. So the reaction is going to be driven to the right due to Le Chatelier's principle. Which, hence, what are we going to do to the CO2 concentration? Well, we're using it to make this. So the CO2 is going to decrease. And how's the respiratory system going to compensate for it? 
Well, it wants to increase CO2 in our body. How do we increase CO2 in our body? Do you breathe more or do you hold your breath? Well, hold your breath and you'll see you have all that CO2 is going to start to build up. So patients with metabolic alkal alkalosis may experience hypoventilation. What's this guy doing? Well, I could have put a little bit more graphic pictures when I uh, looked up vomiting on Google Images, but I figured this would be all right. And, well, what's the environment of the stomach? So you have the esophagus going down. Here's the stomach. It's curling around just like that. What's this environment in here? Well, it's full of HCl, hydrochloric acid. It's very acidic. So if you are vomiting all the acid, you are decreasing it. So you're going to have a higher concentration of bicarbonate in your body, according to that ratio up there. It's going to be the opposite, HCO3- minus to hydrogen ion concentration. You're going to have higher this and lower this. On a side note, vomiting is an interesting one. Because if we vomit just our gastric contents, let's say there's some sort of cancer, or some sort of blockage here in the pyloric region, then you're just going to vomit your uh, acidic contents. But what if you're vomiting from, let's say, the duodenum down? Well, you have a lot of alkalinic contents. So if you're vomiting, I guess, a deep vomit from your small intestine as well too, you're actually going to end up with metabolic acidosis because you're getting rid of a lot of the uh, bicarbonate and all those uh, basic components from your digestive system. Now let's start getting into some compensation mechanisms. The respiratory system is the easier one to think about, so we'll start with that one. You already saw our respiratory compensation above, but I'm just going to repeat it again. Now a quick note on compensation. Compensation means you're making up for something. Here we got the lungs. The lungs are going to be compensating for a problem. The problem where? The problem in the kidneys. So if there's a problem in the kidneys, the lungs are going to compensate for it. If there's a problem in the lungs, then the kidneys are going to compensate for it. So respiratory compensation means where's the problem? The problem is going to be in our renal system. So let's take over here the proton. Let's say there are a lot of protons. If there's a lot of protons, we learned that's one problem. What's the other problem that there could be? Not just a lot of protons. What's another relative way of saying we have more protons? Is we could say we could do what to the bicarbonate? We could decrease the bicarbonate. It could be both or it could be either. What type of environment is that going to cause? Well, we have a high amount of protons, so that's going to cause a what to the pH? That's going to cause a low pH, so that is acidosis. And again, here we're talking about uh, metabolic problems. So the, the problem doesn't necessarily have to be in the kidneys. It could be just uh, lactic acid buildup or whatever sort of acid buildup in the body. Just metabolic, again, doesn't mean just kidneys. It means anywhere in the body other than the lungs. So how are or how is the respiratory system going to compensate for this acidic condition in the body? Is it going to be driven to the left or to the right according to Le Chatelier? Well again, always just focus on the protons and the CO2. If we have a lot of it, then we're going to go in the opposite direction. So what's going to happen to the amount of CO2 if we keep going this way and this way and this way? We're going to keep making more, so we're going to increase the CO2. So if we have an increase in the CO2 in our body, are we going to cause the respiratory system to hyper or hypoventilate? Well, there's a lot of CO2. There's a lot. How do you think about it? Try thinking about both. Hold your breath. That's an example of hypoventilation. You're trapping the CO2 in there. We don't want to do that. We want to get rid of that CO2 because there's a lot. So what's the body going to do? The body is going to hyperventilate to get rid of it, to eject that CO2 from the body. So what's happening here is if we have metabolic acidosis, then the respiratory system is going to hyperventilate. As mentioned before, the increase in CO2 will stimulate the carotid and the aortic arch, those chemoreceptors, for hyperventilation. Now, metabolic 
alkalosis, the pH is going to be what? It's going to be increased. What does it mean if we have an increase in pH? That means what to the hydrogen ions? Increase or decrease? That's going to be decrease. Another way again though is to do what to the bicarbonate? Because if remember we had our equation here HCO3 minus to the H plus. Well we want to say there's a low hydrogen ion concentration but what's another way of doing that without changing the amount of hydrogen ion is we could increase the amount of bicarbonate. So if there's a lot more bicarbonate then there's relatively less of the hydrogen ion. So is the reaction going to go to the left or is it going to go to the right? If it goes to the left it's going to keep using all the hydrogen. It's going to decrease it further. So the reaction according to Le Chatelier is going to be driven to the right. So we're using everything over here. So what's going to happen to the CO2 over here? The CO2 is going to decrease. So if we're here in the body and there's a low concentration of CO2 and we're causing alkalosis, how is the body going to compensate, specifically the respiratory system? Well, we want to act by increasing the CO2. We want to compensate for what's happening here. So how do we compensate? Do we breathe more or we breathe less? Well, we breathe less. Example, just hold your breath and you're going to be trapped in. So we're going to hypoventilate. Hypoventilation. And that's simply how the respiratory system compensates for the metabolic problems in the body. So let's proceed to the renal system and this one's a little bit more complicated. So we saw how the respiratory system worked on compensation by playing with the CO2. Either we held our breath or decreased our breathing hypoventilation which increased the CO2 or we hyperventilated to get rid of the CO2 which decreased it. So we played with this half of the equation for the respiratory system. For the renal system we're going to play over here with this side of the equation. So let's say somebody over here, right, we got respiratory conditions, these are the problems. Let's say somebody has respiratory acidosis. So again, how did respiratory acidosis happen? Well, what was going on is, you know, they held their breath or for whatever reason they can't get the air out, so they're breathing less. They have a buildup of CO2 in their body. So again, always, always, always focus on these guys for right now. So what, what's that going to do? It's going to drive the reaction to the right. So it's going to increase the hydrogen ion concentration. So what does the renal system or what, is the, what do the kidneys do? So basically for compensation, they get to play with two things. What are they going to want to do to the amount of protons? Are they going to want to increase it further? No, they're definitely going to want to decrease the number of protons. What are they going to do to the amount of bicarbonate? Well, if we have bicarbonate, then we can buffer and we can neutralize things. So we're going to increase the amount of bicarbonate. We'll get to the mechanisms next. Let's just deal with this simple idea. Okay, let's say there's respiratory alkalosis. With respiratory alkalosis, there's decreased CO2 due to hyperventilation which is going to drive the reaction which way? It's going to drive the reaction to the left because we're going to try to replace that. So what is that going to do to the hydrogen ion concentration? It's going to decrease it. So now we're in a state where we have a decreased amount of hydrogen ions. How can the kidneys compensate if the kidneys are playing with these two numbers? Right, remember the lungs, I'll highlight that again, the lungs play with this side. The kidneys play with this side. So what can the kidneys do to these two guys over here? Well if we keep decreasing it that's not good because we'll keep increasing the pH. So to compensate the kidneys will increase the concentration of hydrogen ions. What are they going to do to the bicarbonate? It is going to decrease the concentration of bicarbonate in the blood. So we're about to discuss the mechanisms here on the 
uh, next part but I'm just gonna simply draw right there Bowman's capsule here's the proximal what uh, convoluted tubule we call this the descending you should say it loop of Henle then it comes up becomes wider we call that the ascending loop of Henle or the limb of Henle and it goes and what is this called right here uh, be your DCT your uh, distal convoluted tubule and what does it connect to at the end it connects to your collecting duct so what are some points that I want to make here there are different processes that go on at the kidney there's a process that goes on here we call that filtration and then the other two processes reabsorption what secretion pretty much go on throughout the rest of the nephron so reabsorption will be coming back out uh, into the bloodstream because the blood vessels would be here and then secretion would be going into the opposite direction so that would be secretion so what does that mean here in terms of compensation well let's say we took uh, respiratory acidosis the compensation means we need to decrease the amount of protons that are in the blood so what is it going to do it is going to secrete protons and reabsorb bicarbonate so looking over here right we want to decrease we want to compensate by decreasing protons so we'll tend to secrete more protons into here so eventually they will be excreted from the body we want to reabsorb more bicarbonate which means this way so it comes back out into the bloodstream so it can go and neutralize what's going on compensation over here we want to increase the amount of protons because we have a basic condition in the body so what are we going to do to the protons? We will secrete and also filter less. So less secretion here, greater secretion here, greater reabsorption here. So what's going to happen over here? We're going to have less reabsorption. So one more time just to review this. Say we have an alkaloic or a basic condition that means we have a low amount of protons that means we need to conserve the protons inside so to conserve them we're going to secrete less so less secretion of protons so that will keep them in the bloodstream we don't want the bicarbonate but the bicarbonate is already filtered through here so we don't want to bring it back so we will reabsorb less so what's an easier way to think of this Think of the bicarbonate as getting filtered and then reabsorbed. Think of the proton as getting secreted. So then it just depends where do you want to put the block. If you block the reabsorption, then you're just going to urinate more of the bicarbonate. So you're going to decrease the bicarbonate. You're decreasing the reabsorption because it's freely filtered here at the glomerulus if you block the protons you're not secreting them then you're gonna keep them in here so you're decreasing the secretion what about over here for acidosis we want to increase the secretion so we want more of the secretion to happen that way we can excrete it from our body don't confuse secretion which is going from blood the tubule with excretion into the toilet All right, so out here into the toilet that would be excretion and then for the bicarbonate we are going to want to reabsorb more of it back into our blood so the next thing now is we'll look at the specific mechanisms that handle these conditions alright a lot of pictures and cells and all that in here but don't let that bog you down let's get started so mechanisms I'm saying this is location one of two PCT proximal convoluted tubule the thick ALH ascending loop or limb of Henle and the early DCT now uh, these locations here um, easy way to look at them is just when you draw the nephron out like this just the way straight out and you go in a straight line you'll hit all these parts like right here you'll hit the PCT if you keep going 
you hit the ascending limb of Henley and if you keep going you hit the early part of the DCT. Why does this matter? It's because the mechanisms differ in this area versus later on the distal and the collecting duct right here. The late part of the distal convoluted tubule and the collecting duct which we'll do next. So let's get oriented to these views. As you see here it says bicarbonate buffer, phosphate buffer, ammonia buffer. These are the three main types of buffers that are going to be going on. Now just so we get the view here I'm going to take this yellow color and this side of the cell here, here, and here as you see it says tubular lumen for all of those here that's going to be inside the tubule and then over here it says renal interstitial fluid I'll just take brown and it's going to be going back and forth between the blood pretty much so here that's the interstitium that is outside uh, the tubular system there there and there so this is the flow as you see coming down or going through so what are special things to note without getting in too much detail with the bicarbonate buffer system as you see here the bicarbonate uh, it's going through right if the bicarbonate stayed in here it would be excreted into the urine it would just travel its way through but what's happening is going down here going down here right it's coming down then it's making its way in through the cell you can see the carbonic anhydrase uh, it's combining and it's going to go back so basically what are we doing here is by carb what's the important thing here is recycled we didn't make anything new we just recycled it it was filtered out right at the beginning we filtered it and it was going it's making its way through then all of a sudden remember what we said we reabsorbed it so here it is being reabsorbed let's go over to the phosphate buffer system here you see your phosphate and over here you have a proton being pumped out and it's gonna combine and there we go we got the phosphate what's interesting to note here there was no bicarbon here that's going through here I mean there is but just in terms of using this system there's no bicarb so what's going on is inside we have that reaction going on and we get one new bicarb I'll write that out right so one new bicarb so that's an advantage the phosphate buffer system will produce us one new bicarbonate to go help take care of the acidic environment again in all this situation we're assuming acidic environments let's look at the ammonia buffer system what's interesting here is glutamine which is coming from the metabolism mostly from the liver has made its way to the cell and what's going on here well over here we just had one bicarb over here glutamine is going to split and we get two of the ammonium we get the reaction and we get the excretion uh, out here I mean eventual excretion but the main important thing here is we get two new bicarbs so again without getting into too much detail the bicarbonate buffer is just gonna recycle the bicarb recycle or one bicarb recycled the phosphate buffer is gonna give us one new bicarbonate and you can see the details if you need to uh, but I'm going to keep going and then over here the ammonia um, buffer system is going to give us two new bicarbonates and this is very important because we get ammonium in the urine and you can measure the ammonium in urine and that will tell you how much of an acidic condition a person is in so again this is location one of two it includes three areas the PCT the thick ascending limb and the early DCT All right, so if we divide it here we got the early over here we got the late over here and then over here are the collecting ducts so these two portions are gonna be coming next what's the big thing that's gonna separate them is the sodium alright we have sodium reabsorption going on in these parts so when we go down here next in our location uh, 2 of 2 
Right, we're talking about the late DCT and the collecting duct, which would be this part here would be the late DCT, and then we'll be talking about the collecting duct. First thing to note right away is the phosphate buffer. This is the same, the same as above. So this did not change. So you can see here is the sodium and whatnot. And what did it do? We produced one new bicarb. So that's exactly the same as was above. So what's different to know here is we don't have that sodium reabsorption. We're just using a straight proton pump that is just going to pump that hydrogen out. But same idea. If it's bicarbonate, all we're doing is see here it comes down here. It was filtered and there's coming through here and then it is reabsorbed. So it was filtered up here earlier on. Remember the beginning it was filtered and it kept going going through and then later on it was reabsorbed. So what did we do with the bicarb? We just recycled the bicarb. And then the last thing over here for the ammonia, this is a little bit different. Remember before how many bicarbs did we get new? Well, go if we go back up and look, you'll see we got two new bicarbs. But when we go back down here, we see we only get one new bicarb. There's no recycling, nothing's coming back in. We're just getting one new bicarb. So just to recap, the main differences is, let's do actually similarity first. The phosphate buffer is going to be the same uh, back in the first portions versus the second portions, exactly the same with one new bicarb. The ammonia buffer earlier on is going to give us two new bicarbs versus later on it's going to give us just one new bicarb. You can think about it as like the early bird gets the warm, the earlier the better, so you're going to get an extra one. When we go to the bicarb buffer, it's going to be one bicarb, it's going to be recycled for both, but what's the main difference is there's sodium reabsorption earlier on, and later on there's no sodium reabsorption, it's just the straight proton pump. So let's try to recap this and have a little summary. Alright, so time for a summary. Okay, uh, if you're interested, the normal values for all these things right here, the pH of the blood, the CO2, bicar, all that, the normal values are here. We call them the ABGs, the arterial blood gases. All right. uh, how is it measured? Basically, you put a needle usually into the radial artery or sometimes the femoral artery, draw some blood, and look at the values. So these are the normal values over here. I'm going to walk you through one of them really quick, respiratory acidosis. Let's write our equation. So we have CO2 plus what? What else do we breathe out? H2O, it's a reversible reaction. What's the enzyme? Carbonic anhydrase. We make H2CO3, that is carbonic acid, another reversible reaction. And over here we pull off one proton and that leaves us with what is this HCO3 minus that is bicarb so let's try one of them respiratory acidosis acidosis what's up with the pH the pH is going to be down if the pH is going to be down let's jump over to the hydrogen ion that's going to be up so if we go up here this goes up. If this goes up, then which way is the reaction going to go? The reaction is going to go to the left. So what is that going to do to the CO2? It's going to increase the CO2. So this is initially what's happening. All right? So asterisk is going to say initial event. Why am I doing that? Because what are the kidneys going to do? How, what's going to be renal compensation? What's going to happen to the bicarbonate if there are a lot of protons in there? How are we going to neutralize it? Well, we're going to need bicarbonate to match with the protons. So there's going to be an increase in the protons. Let's do respiratory alkalosis. So the respiratory alkalosis, we're going to have a high pH, which means we're going to have a low proton. If we have a low proton, that means we need to go to the right. That means we're going to have a low CO2. 
a low CO2. That's the initial thing that's going to happen. What's the renal system going to do to compensate for it? So this is compensation. It's going to decrease the bicarbonate. Why is it decreasing the bicarbonate? Because we're having a low H. If we have a low H+, plus, that's saying like we're having more of the bicarbonate. So we don't need too much. We don't need a lot of base. So we need to decrease the amount of base if you remember back to that ratio we had. Now let's go the other way. Metabolic acidosis. Metabolic acidosis means the pH is going to be down. If the pH is going to be down, we're going to have a lot of hydrogen ions, which means we're going to have a relatively low amount of bicarb. Now this is the initial event, the bicarb. So what's the respiratory system going to do in order to compensate? Well, we have a lot of protons, so a lot of protons are going to push the reaction to the left. We don't want to have a lot of CO2, right? Because a lot of protons is pushing it to the left, they're already making a lot of CO2. So the respiratory system is going to hyperventilate to breathe a lot of it out. So that's going to be the compensation. For metabolic alkalosis, the pH is going to be increased which means our hydrogen ion concentration is going to be decreased. It's alkalosis and bicarbonate is a base so that's going to be increased relatively. Again, wh where is this coming from? Just think back to that equation, right? HCO3 minus over the proton. If we have a low amount of protons, it's like we have a lot of base. So that's, that's going up. So again, this is the initial event. And what's the compensation going to be by the respiratory system? Well, if we have a low amount of protons, the reaction is going to go to the right to try to add it. So that's going to be decreasing the CO2. So what's the respiratory system going to want to do? It's going to want to increase the CO2 by hypoventilation. Now, I want to draw your attention to something right here. Just these three values right here. Let's just ignore the hydrogen for a moment and just look at these three pH CO2 HCO3 if you take a look at these arrows notice that the metabolic ones all point in the same way alkalosis all up acidosis all down then if you look at the respiratory all right look at the pH the CO2 and the bicarb are in the opposite direction the acidosis right they're in the opposite direction so CO2 and bicarb are always in the same direction, both up, both down, both down, both up. It's how they match with the pH. So here's a little way I just thought of coming up about it. Respiratory, take the first two letters, R-E, R-E. Values are, again, take the R-E, reversed. What do I mean? Well, look at metabolic, they're all the same way, all the same way. Respiratory, well, it's easy to figure out pH. Alkalosis means you have a high pH, so that means the other two are down. Acidosis, that means you have a low pH. Okay, so reverse, so the other two are gonna be up. Always the same direction for these guys. So I'm gonna show you an example of that coming up in some practice questions next. But the other way is just to say that CO2 and HCO3 minus always, always in the same direction. The hydrogen ion ones you can figure out easily because this is going to be the opposite of pH. So just focus on these three and then you can get the fourth one after. All right, let's try some practice questions. Okay, so you can pause the video and attempt these questions, but I'm going to go ahead and answer them right now. Hypoventilation, okay, hypoventilation. One of the things to do here is you can draw, you know, the little air sacs, the alveoli here, uh, just, you know, a track leading into them. All right, hypoventilation, so you're not breathing a lot. If you're not breathing a lot, that means a lot of that CO2 is going to be stuck in there. So best thing to do is just write out that uh, whole equation here. And then we got the carbonic acid and that reversible reaction. You got the proton plus the um, bicarbonate. Okay, so what's going to happen here is, here I'll just pick a different color. 
the CO2 is increasing, so which way are we going to go? We're going to drive the reaction to the right. Look at the hydrogen, what's going to happen to it? It's going to increase. So we're talking about ventilation, we're talking about a respiratory thing, so these are already out of the question. And what's going on is we have lots of protons. If we have lots of protons, the pH is going to be down. So we're going to have acidosis. So this one's going to be acidosis. In response to respiratory acidosis, so in response to what just happened, what are the kidneys going to do? A couple only choices and a couple two things that could happen. Now, what am I going to do here is I'm just going to shortcut right here to the chart and then I'll explain it. Respiratory acidosis, let's do the pH. The pH is going to be down. And what did we say when something is respiratory? It's going to be reversed, right? So we have, doesn't matter which one you put first because they're both going to be the same. We have the bicarbonate and we also have the CO2. So these two are going to be reversed up and up. But which one of these was initial? Well, this is a respiratory problem, so this was the initial one. Let's draw out a nephron. So let's draw here Bowman's capsule. Here's our proximal convoluted tubule. It's going to be narrow as it goes down. As it comes up, it's going to widen up a little bit. And it's a little bit of exaggeration, the DCT. And then to our collecting duct. So let's just draw this arrow like this. Right, so let's say the bicarbonate, HCO3 minus, goes through here, comes out. What do we call it at the glomerulus? We call that filtration. What do we call it when it comes back out into the blood? We call it reabsorption. And then let's draw the other direction. This is secretion. Secretion usually happens to the hydrogen ions. Anything that ends out here, that's going to be excretion. So think about this uh, conceptually. We have an acidic condition. Do we want more acids here? No. So what do we want to do to secretion? We want to increase hydrogen secretion. What about the reabsorption of bicarbonate? What do we want to do with that? Well, bicarbonate is going to help neutralize the acid, so we want to increase bicarbonate reabsorption. Now let's go through our choices. Kidneys secrete more hydrogen ions only. Do they secrete it? Yes, but not only. We need bicarb. So th this is this is a pretty good choice. We could we could think about this. B. Kidneys excrete more bicarbonate. Excrete means we're gonna you know dump it in the toilet. We don't want to. We want to bring it back out. So that can't be a choice. Kidneys excrete fewer bicarbonate ions only. Uh, they will excrete fewer but not not only so the, these two choices okay we'll hold on to them hopefully we can combine them kidneys secrete more hydrogen do they secrete more hydrogen yes ions and more bicarbonate ions do they secrete more bicarbonate well if it secreted it it would end out we don't want to secrete we want to reabsorb so no let's see if this will combine a and c Kidneys secrete more hydrogen ions. Okay, it's secreting it. And fewer bicarb. Yeah, we don't want to secrete them. We want to reabsorb it. So that's going to be here, choice E. So I know I went a little quickly through that, but it's just to save some time of the video because it's already pretty long. But go slower through that and step back, play, rewind, and make sure you understand it. Let's continue. All right, so two more questions here. These are the last two questions, three and four. A, B, G, arterial blood gases. We have the pH, we have the CO2, and we have the bicarbonate. I gave you the values. The normal values were back up top. I'll just write the normal values for you again. The pH is about 7.4. You can go either way by 0.05. The P, CO2 is around 40. You can go either way by 5. 
if you notice that each of these have 40 in it and the bicarb is around 24 to 28. I just remember there's a 4 there as well too. And these two values both are millimeters of mercury. So let's look at this here. The pH is below 7.4 so we know this is going to be acidosis. So we just don't know what type is it going to be. Is it going to be metabolic or is it going to be respiratory? Let's look at PCO2. Uh, it's higher than 5 over because this is a range. It goes 35 to 45. So the PCO2 is high. Let's look at the bicarb. Oh, the bicarb is within range. So this is normal. Okay, so what did I, what did I tell you about the chart? Well, look, the pH is one direction, right? And the CO2 is in the other direction. They are reversed. So if it's reversed, right? Reversed, then it's going to be respiratory acidosis. And what happened here? Why is the bicarb normal? Because uh, maybe it was acute. Uh, the kidneys take a long time, hours and days to respond. So it hasn't responded yet. So this is respiratory acidosis without compensation, without renal compensation. Let's go to the next one. All right, pH is down. It's below 7.35. It's 7.31. The pCO2 is 55, just like above. It's up. You guys getting the point now? Here's the acidosis from the pH down. This is up, it's reversed, so you could already say respiratory acidosis. Let's see if there's compensation. Well, bicarb is supposed to be 24 to 38. It's high, so yes, this is with compensation. If you wanna practice more of these questions, I gave the link right here. You're gonna have to type it, go to this website, and uh, you can practice a lot more of those uh, scenarios. Just uh, a few last words here. The first line of defense when we have an acid or base problem are the buffers in the body. They react in seconds. They're very quick. But all they do is they just hold up the acid or the base. They don't eliminate it. They just hold it up. Uh, the second line of defense are going to be our lungs. They react in minutes. So that's going to be the next fastest thing. And finally, our third line of defense are going to be our kidneys and uh, unfortunately it takes hours and days for them to react that's why you'll see them uh, in chronic versus acute conditions but what's good is they may take a while but they are the most powerful so I just came up with a little thing here you can ignore it if you want the kidneys don't kid around because they are the most powerful if uh, you have any questions you can email me here at my gmail you can also find me on Facebook with my name, or I'm just trying to start developing a website. I'm trying to make it free because I know there's a lot of paid sites, but here's my website. Please don't make fun of it. I'm still working on it and learning how to build websites. All right, good luck on your exam, and hopefully everything works out. Take care.